What's going on everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. It's Saturday the 14th, I think. Yes? The 14th of March. And uh, I'm here in front of my uh, Celestial Pearl Daniel fry tank. Um, and I'm doing an update on, uh, as promised, today I'm gonna update on all the fry that I have in the fish room and uh, all the fry that we're expecting in the next coming days. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on my personal health. Uh, I am still feeling pretty shitty. Um, shortness of breath, same as yesterday. I do have a slight fever today that's higher than yesterday. It's about 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Most times when I checked, uh, it was 98.6 yesterday. Um, aside from that, my congestion in my nose has reduced, and uh, but my chest is still painful, and uh, I do have difficulty breathing quite a bit. Um, but I'm still okay. I'm not dying. So um, I haven't been able to get any help from uh, my healthcare system, which is pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, all the numbers they provided do not work. I called 811, which does not work. I called the telehealth number and the Ontario Health line that, they, that I'm supposed to call, both busy or does not work. Um, I called 911 finally, and uh, they were not able to help me except send me an ambulance, which I didn't want to. Uh, so uh, my condition hasn't worsened from yesterday and uh, I am still able to live at home So if I was having a common cold or cough, I would be living th through this and I'm just pretending like it is what it is and uh, um, Just gonna live through it and see what happens if my condition worsens I am gonna call in and I am supposed to go in Monday now to a drive-through test center that is gonna be newly established so I can get tested because uh, I am actually at a high-risk category for this virus based on my work uh, so having said that, we're just going to go through the room and look at all the baby fish and uh, what type of fish we're expecting over the next little while. There are angels laying eggs, so you can kind of witness that in a bit. Uh, I'll show you guys that real quickly, actually. Uh, so let's go check those out. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel down below. We're at 300 subscribers plus. Uh, I filmed how to see Braille Playco video that's coming up next. So stay tuned and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video as well as other similar videos get uploaded. Uh, as always, thank you so much. Let's get to this video. The first fish we're going to look at are uh, my angel fish pair. Well, one of my three or four angel fish pairs. These guys are massive. Look, look at the size of my hand and look at the size of that fish. He's bigger than my hand. It's much bigger than my hand. You can't actually see it in this picture, but he's huge. He's huge. He's about 11 inches across from top to bottom. So from top there to bottom there is about 11 inches. These are 12 inch tiles. So he's a big guy. Um, this is an 18 inch tile. That's the girl. Um, it's all the eggs. Several hundred. He goes and fertilizes them. Do your job. I'm not gonna harass them too much. Uh, we are excited to get these babies. Since I am off work for the next couple of weeks, I am gonna get these going. Um, these tanks, need to be uh called out so that will be another update there has been quite a bit of uh, cannibalization in this tank over here so i'm gonna have to do something about that and i did find a couple of dead shrimp which is a little bit alarming um my shrimp usually don't die randomly so that's a little bit alarming so i have to uh do something to keep an eye on that and uh, to figure out what's going on it's probably cannibalization uh, honest to god so moving on we have our Celestial Pearl Daniel breeding group. Uh, they are going to have um, a bunch of new fry in this tank. I just had to move the parents out because there's already a lot of eggs. They've been in here for over a month now. And I have been finding fry in the corners. I just haven't had time to move them. So the next couple of days they're going to be moved out. So a new batch of fry coming in in this tank. Beside that tank is the previous spawn for the CPDs. So these are some of the baby cpds from a month ago so these guys are about actually it's about they're about two months old now um just remember it's march now so um yeah it's so quite a bit bit of cpds in here um i will do a separate video about cpd spawning and uh care because it has been requested by quite a bit of you guys um just try to get some uh, foot in here so you can see how they look. And I still feed them this mixture um, right there. Spirulina and uh, Golden Pearls 5 to 50 micron uh, dust 
Um, it's 50% protein for the golden pearl, pearls and 60% protein for the spirulina. I just mix the two of their both powders and I just dump a bunch in the top of the tank that you just saw me dropping and I dissolve into the water column and they seem to feed on that quite uh, well and there has no issue I've never had issues with them uh, over the last few years now I've been breeding them quite successfully and I'm also noticing there's a few that are um, lighter colored than uh, the rest so I am going to try to separate those and keep them and uh, set up a spawning colony to see if I can breed some uh, lighter colored or luteno or albino um, CPDs which would be cool because nobody else has them um, and uh, basically it's just essentially luck of the draw when it comes to these type of fish when you're breeding them in mass you will start finding one or two albinos here and there are lutenos just have to find them and uh, identify them uh, and uh, separate them this guy right here for example it's very light there's a few that are lighter than uh, the rest in color and uh and in terms of uh you know their body coloration because most of them are gray at this stage there's some that are distinctly yellowish tinted to them than the average gray looking ones so it's a quite a bit of a positive sign fingers crossed so moving on from those guys we are expecting eggs from uh these guys right here uh, and fry. I am a little bit uh, behind on them. I've only have this one female and three males now. Um, they are still, you know, young adults. But uh, I did lose two of the females over the last year, just for fights and stuff. But uh, this female seems to be holding her own. There's two males in here, and uh, I'm excited to see her getting a spawn going. So look out for that. Uh, we will make a video updating those. Uh, these angelfish have been a little slow on the spawns in this tank I believe it's because of these guys uh, they have been eating their own eggs um, but they are exceptional parents so I need to move them out of there uh, these guys same deal when I when they do spawn I just let them grow them out in this tank and I pull them out which is great so I'm excited for that uh, turning around these are the parents of the fry you're about to see I have um, these uh, white cloud fry it's a pure strain of white clouds and uh, there's also fry in this tank so they have been spawning in here so I am going to pull them out uh, in the next couple of days at the same time as my uh, CPDs and then get fry from CPDs as well as these white clouds right away so then look out for that as well it's coming soon um, baby shrimp everywhere so we are going to do a, a separate video on the shrimp shrimplets and care and maintenance as well as um, catching some of these guys out there's a lot in here um, there is some planaria in this tank I need to deal with also planaria outbreak in this tank that I'm need to, needing to deal with um, but as far as fry go there are fry in this tank um, I don't know if you can see them there it's quite a bit so these are the what do you call them uh, white cloud fry I spawned these about a week ago two weeks ago now um, so I'll make a video about that if you guys are interested please comment below and let me know that you want the white cloud video white cloud spawning video um, they're quite easy fish to spawn these fish uh, are usually spawned in summer tubs outside um, in my case, I live in Canada and uh, summer top season is quite short and I didn't want to wait that long when I had so many buried females or females that were full of eggs. So I decided just to spawn them in this 10 gallon tank quite successfully, very easy, very, very straightforward. So I'll make a video about that. If you guys want, please comment below and let me know. Uh, these guys are taking their sweet time to lay eggs. They're my Congo Tetra breeding group. I lost a female, I still have four or three females and there's three males in this tank and then there's two other males in the tank uh, in another tank behind me but uh, they have not spawned in the last two weeks they have been in here for a while so I am uh, trying to get them to spawn and as soon as they do I will update for you guys now for uh, this fry right here these are the rainbow shiners so um, they were successful there's quite a bit of fry in here um, I'm very happy. It's the first time I've ever gotten these to spawn. Um, here, let me try to get you a better angle. There, 
and uh, they did really well. Now, there's a few things that I think I will do to increase the, the spawn size. Although there is quite a bit of fry in here, you can't really see them, I don't know why, but it's really difficult to see in this tank for some reason because of, there's not even any glare. But uh, there they are. It's hard to focus on them, that's what it is. Um, so there's quite a bit of them. Maybe a hundred or so in this tank that uh, that I can see. Or maybe more, you never know actually. But um, surprisingly they were quite easy. The things that I did want to change for the next time was uh, reduce the flow. I mean I did reduce the flow, but even a little bit less than this uh, initially. Um, just because the fry were not, surprisingly, compared to the parents who are living in fast flowing rivers, the fry were very inequipped to swim around uh, in any sort of current. Even that current that you're seeing back there was a little bit too much for some of them. They're getting pushed around and stuff. So um, I have reduced the current since then to to accommodate them a little bit better. And uh, just I'm using the, the water to only oxygenate uh, the air, to only oxygenate the water with very minimal current. Uh, and uh, they seem to be doing really well in that and uh, so that's gonna be the new thing and also I think I'm gonna leave the parents uh, Spawn let the parents spawn for at least another additional day or two because I actually let the parents in this situation Spawn for a whole week and I took them out at the end of the week, but I feel like they didn't get to spawn um, Fully till the end of the week. That's when they were doing the intense spawning behavior uh, And uh, so then what I was what I would do the next time is to put them in add a lot more rock work in the bottom so like you see the rocks that you see in the front here add like maybe another two inches worth of rock all the way across the bottom uh, and uh, of different sizes and grades and then allow the parents to continue spawning while the fry can still hide amongst the rock work in this scenario the fry were not able to hide uh, among these giant rock work because there's not that many and the parents were able to stick their heads through and eat some of the eggs as well as some of the fry so I think um, that's why I have uh, only about 100, 150 fry in here, which is such a low hatch rate compared to uh, the amount of eggs I probably got out of those guys. So the next time what I'm going to do is I'm going to change those two things and increase my fry uh, rate. So that's something to look out for. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because we are going to work with these fish uh, at least a couple more times. Because I want to have a large tank full of these guys as well. My friend who owns the pet store or who uh, manages the pet store uh, wants them as well as my other friend who is a manager at the other pet store wants them. So I definitely have a demand for them and I definitely have a demand at home personally myself. So I'm definitely going to breed them again. So that's something to look out for. Um, another set of fries that we have that didn't do too well are uh, these angel fish. Uh, there's only three or four of these guys left. Um, these are from a few months back and uh, they did not fare so well. I don't know why, but uh, I only got these two to survive. These three to survive. There might be a fourth one in there. Um, but I do have eggs in here from uh, my L010A red lizard catfish. Uh, they're about a week old now, maybe five, six days. So they're ready to hatch. Next couple of days, they're going to hatch. So I will update on those guys soon. There are Placo eggs all over. Um, I'm not going to really go through them because there's nothing to show. They're in caves or tubes. Uh, these are the other angels that did, did well. Um, these guys are about two weeks younger than the ones you just saw. Mostly survived in here. Uh, quite a large group. It's probably 50 or 60. Uh, eating well, doing well. This guy is definitely a keeper. I'm definitely keeping that one. He's like three times the size. There's a couple of those that are like much bigger and with really intense dorsal finish. So I'm expecting these to have like really nice fins when they're grown up. Uh, like the parents and their great uncles and stuff. So excited for these. Uh, I'm going to keep some of these for myself. Uh, so those are the fry I have in the fish room. There's not that many uh, other fry that I can update on. Um, there might be eggs in this tank. Uh, this guy right here has been one of these to have a girl in the tube. I think it's this one here. I'm not sure, but I think it's this one. Uh, he has been trapping her for like the last few weeks now. I'm kind of uh, upset that there hasn't been any eggs, but uh, they are taking their time and there will be eggs soon. And he hasn't been a he has been gentle with the female, so she is actually doing really well, which is a good thing. Otherwise, I would remove him. 
um, from keeping her trapped for so long. I mean, it's not constant trapping. Like, she hasn't been trapped the entire time. She comes out, and then they go into a next cave and get trapped again. So, I feel like it's something that they have figured out already. And uh, so, since she hasn't been hurt so far, I'm kind of hopeful that she will be good. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on her quite, quite closely. So, uh, look out for that. And as well, um, I was supposed to add some resin to these tanks to reduce the nitrates even further. But uh, since the virus thing happened uh, and the world is kind of on a lockdown i am being a bit better with my finances so i am not going to buy the resin till the end of this outbreak is resolved and we have come to some type of resolution in terms of um the quarantines and all the pandemic situation that we're dealing with so uh there won't be as much unboxing videos for sure there'll be an order made through angel fence for some supplies some food and stuff so I'll do the unboxing video for that. But aside from that, I would not have much unboxing videos. But I will have a lot more spawning videos as well as how-to care and maintenance videos. So stay tuned. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe down below. And hit that notification icon for further updates when this type of videos get uploaded. As always, thank you for your support. You guys are all awesome. Thank you for sticking through this thing, whole thing with me. And thank you for bearing um, my shortcomings with uh, my health this last couple of days as well as um, just uh, generally what's going on. Stay safe out there, people. It is not a game. This, this virus is not a joke. Everybody needs to be protected, and especially if you have elderly loved ones, please make sure you guys take care of them and, 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 and make sure that you do not bring any diseases to them. So isolate them and isolate yourself away from them as much as possible. Uh, thank you for your support. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless. So uh, this is some footage of my Apistogramma uh, breeding colony. Uh, there are fry in this tank as well. I just uh, didn't uh, add them in the earlier part of the video, so I figured I'm gonna add them at the end. So just filled some butyl of those guys. Um, I'm actually quite tired right now. This is about an hour later, and uh, that making that video got me really tired. So I'm, I'm actually just sitting down editing. Um, so I just added this uh, bit, uh, just uh, watch till the end, and thank you so much for watching. Um, so these are triple red apistogramma, um, I forgot their scientific name, I'm so tired. Anyways, you can see the fries still at the, in, the, in the upcoming bits, and then at the end there's a bit of a <coughs> um, video of uh, some uh, placo spawning activity of my Ryan Loricaria Lancy Lada pair. So uh, check that out as well and thank you so much. Enjoy. God bless.